the flashlight UG. Uganda has deployed security personnel around the city as more delegates stream in for the five-day summit. Major roads leading to the summit venue have been closed to traffic and pedestrians. Media have also been barred from accessing the convention center and a media center created here some 13 kilometers away. The summit route itself and which is going to be highly uh, uh, guarded or tightly regulated with uh, a number of diversions and holding of traffic and other road users. But of course the traffic police will take into consideration of all those who will be accessing the Entebbe airport, those who have flights and those who are coming in the country. NAM from its inception was always supportive of the Palestinian people and their struggle. We are the last kid around the block. All of you accomplished your national independence and you put an end to colonialism and you in the African continent succeeded in the remarkable accomplishment of getting rid of apartheid. Apartheid is manifesting itself by the Israeli occupation against our people. And we are still under this colonial occupation by Israel and we see genocide committed against our people, particularly in the Gaza Strip. That's why we are grateful to South Africa for taking the case to the ICJ asking for provisional measures. Meaning, hopefully, that the court will say that this fighting has to stop so that the court can investigate the intent of this, you know, uh, 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 genocide. All these important issues are before this summit and we are confident that the non-aligned movement will not leave the, uh, the people of Palestine behind. Nobody should be left behind, definitely not the Palestinians. We trust this movement, we trust the leadership of Uganda and I believe they will do the right thing. We are not asking for anything other than standing with us against this aggression. We all stand with each other when one of us faces calamity. We are facing a massive calamity. I don't think that it is exaggeration from us to expect support from our brothers and sisters from the movement. If I came up to you and asked you if you're team red or team blue, you might find that an odd question, right? Okay, here's another. What do the leaders of Yugoslavia, India, Egypt, Ghana, and Indonesia from the 1950s all have in common? Well, they all helped create an organization you might remember from your history class, 
known as the non-aligned movements. The occasion, the handing over of control of the international zone. In the 1950s, these leaders lived in a world that was often seen as divided between states allied to either Team Red, the Soviet Union, and Team Blue, the United States. The Cold War between the two nuclear superpowers was a period of extreme geopolitical tensions. However, many countries from Ghana to India didn't want to get caught up in this great power rivalry and decided to go another way. And I suggest that this conference should have called upon the powers of the world to disarm. In 1961, the non-aligned movement had its first summit. Its principles were based on human rights, non-interference, sovereignty, non-aggression, and equality. Essentially, members agreed they wouldn't ally themselves or be involved in defense pacts with either the US or the Soviet Union. They came together to support their country's independence and resist imperialism and colonialism. Notably, many of these members were from developing nations that had recently become independent from colonial rule. Today, it has over a hundred members, but the movement doesn't have a constitution or even a permanent secretariat, unlike other organizations such as the African Union. And its highest decision-making body usually meets once every three years. The actual running of the movement is the responsibility of the country holding the chairmanship. That country also tries to align diplomatic efforts and the UN between members. So with the end of the Cold War in 1991, how relevant is it today? On paper, the non-aligned movement is quite impressive. It's the second largest group of states in the world after the UN and represents more than half the world's population. And yet, in recent years, some have come to question its relevance. Criticism of Western policies in the Global South has become a core theme of discussion across many states and many have come to see the movement as gaining relevance again and being a forum for discussing how many of the world's biggest issues are to be discussed. So time will tell if the non-aligned movement will find its purpose in the 21st century. Road users have been asked to prepare their trips ahead of time and comply with the disruptions to avoid delays. One of the most pressing topics on the agenda of the summit is the war in Gaza. Heads of delegations are pushing for a peaceful resolution to end the fighting there. Concerns have been raised about the worsening humanitarian crisis and some nations have accused Israel of committing crimes against humanity. A Palestinian official has asked member states to stand in solidarity and defend the victims of aggression in Gaza. The onslaught and the aggression that we are facing for 100 days, unprecedented, and I know that the movement that supported Palestine from the beginning will continue to support Palestine until, you know, we put an end to this tragedy and accomplish the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people. Also up for discussion are questions of respect of sovereignty which have been raised by the Republic of Somalia. It comes after Ethiopia signed a pact with the breakaway region of Somaliland for access to the sea. This angered Somalia which considers Somaliland to be part of its territory. Other issues include climate change and debt management. Thank you for watching our channel. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment.